I brought my cell phone. Not the most original object, I know. But it's very important to me. I use it every day, almost every hour, every minute. It helps me to monitor the press, to monitor the media. So it's indispensable as an object for me. It's an object also of fear, as well as of uh, efficiency. So my main job is being a spokesperson of a parliamentary group, group of a political party in the parliament. And I have a side job, let's say, that's teaching at a university, which is still one of my main passions, teaching, explaining things to young people. And I do that three hours a week. I really enjoyed writing my thesis. It was about bishops and how they managed monasteries. And I had a very good relationship with my supervisor back then. And she just asked me, there was a project and there was a position to be filled as a PhD researcher. I liked it in these four years, and I also did one year of, of postdoc. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I definitely considered staying in academia, because it's very attractive. But after those five years, research was something that I thought of as, I've done it, I liked it, and I can go on for 10, 12, 11 years. Um, but I don't think I would have developed myself as much as I do now. I think sometimes it's interesting to choose a com completely different path in your career. I think in the year that I did a poet's doc, I was already scouting for options, but it was difficult. To be honest, as a historian, you don't have a lot of career prospects. You have to cope with a lot of prejudice with employers and HR people. They want to pigeonhole people as much as possible. No disrespect to HR people, of course, but they want to pigeonhole them. They want to have clear categories and they want to fit you in those categories. And they think that PhD people are bookish people. They work as individuals, not in teams. They're unable to keep short deadlines. They have a very narrow field of interest and I really experienced those prejudices. And so I applied for many different jobs and I also eventually decided to do a, a management course just to broaden my options. But even there, I had to cope with this prejudice. And even there, when I applied, I have to say that sometimes a PhD was a liability rather than a trump card. I think it's usually important for any PhD to be preemptive on those issues, to keep them in mind when you go to a uh, application, to an interview, to a job interview, be mindful of those prejudices and trying to find answers for them. I ended up in a job that was below my level, I would say. If you want to get in, into a profession or into a branch or into I wanted to go into politics, but if you want to do something else, if you want to go into a certain profession, don't be afraid to take a step back, to make a better leap afterwards, basically. Which was what I did. I spent, I think, one year and a half as a parliamentary assistant, but afterwards I could take this leap to become spokesperson. And that was mainly because when I applied for that job, that was a job, an internal job that became vacant. And when I applied for it, they saw that I had potential. I would just advise people not to choose an easy path after they, their PhD. It's uh, an exploration. And also you, you had your four years of being well paid, of having job security for four years, having a comfortable job, having a lot of flexibility. It's very hard to find a job that's so nice. So it's a very hard search. It's a, it's a very hard quest to find that. So I, I, I do realize, and I had that fear as well. I, I met so many people over the years which had that fear or had that insecurity or that stress at the end of their PhD. I think it's very normal, but you have to have a plan. What I would advise is to start with it sooner than later. Start with an alternative career path sooner than later. Start volunteering. Start 
doing an internship. Start building these con contacts, start building a network. You will eventually get there, I, I'm sure. You've basically already shown that you're a smart person and that you have intelligence, that you have persistence. That's a given. So you don't have to convince your future employer that you are intelligent, persistent, that you can work hard. That's not a problem. But you will have to con convince them that you are also open to other things, that you can work in a team, that you have also these other skills that benefit in another workplace.